Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day to all. Uh, our uh, course for today is office etiquette. To start with, let me, I am Dr. Luisito Masanga, uh, your facilitator for this course. Uh, for those students who are unfamiliar with me or does not know me, allow me to give a brief profile of the facilitator. Okay, I have 34 years of corporate industry experience in facilities and administration management, sales and marketing, project and services, construction energy management, occupational safety and health, and security management. I have also nine years of academic experience uh, in management and marketing programs, uh, both for the graduate and the undergraduate studies. Uh, I am well versed in research activities. Uh, I am also a accredited uh, occupational safety and health practitioner of the Department of Labor and Employment Bureau of Working Condition in the Philippines. Uh, number two, I'm also a certified security professional by the Philippine Industrial Security uh, Association and also a real estate license broker of the uh, Housing Land Use Regulatory Board. All right, so let us uh, see our roadmap for our course office etiquette. Uh, we have uh, learning outcomes here. Uh, one is understanding the history of most common uh, etiquette that were, uh, you know, uh, used in the past. Or these are the traditional rules of etiquette. Uh, next is we will learn how to define or the definition of office etiquette. Uh, next is uh, we are going to comprehend the value, the relevance of office etiquette. And of course, the last is the analysis or we will have to uh, do uh, a synthesis no? on the uh, basic uh, rules of etiquette, office etiquette. Our learning, uh, our learning objectives will be to discuss the history of common etiquette rules. Uh, deliberate the definition of office etiquette and explain its relevance. Number three is explain and provide examples of basic rules in office etiquette. My dear students, if you have question in your mind, I want you to speak it out immediately. Uh, just raise your hand uh, and uh, please, uh, it is my pleasure to answer your uh, questions, especially those thoughts that are in the gray areas. To proceed, our module contents has four bullets. The traditional etiquette in the past, we define office etiquette, the importance of office etiquette, and then the rules in office etiquette. No? So this is the roadmap of the module. Okay, moving forward. Uh, you can see in the picture, this is the President of the United States, uh, President Trump. No? And according to Micah Meir, uh, she is an etiquette expert. According to Micah, having good etiquette at work most simply means to be considerate and respectful of everyone around us. That's why I took uh, a, uh, a photo of uh, these ethics, respect, integrity, and honesty. So according to this uh, expert, we are in a, an office is an environment where it, it is consists basically of our colleagues, which are all professional. Uh, whether our office is designed as open space, uh, they have cubicles 
and uh, along with that cubicles there is a post or a, a logo or a label that this department is uh, let's say a human resource department or production department that is sharing uh, the same open space so uh, in the first in the 21st century this is the design of the workplace environment it is an open space and uh, this open space consists of various uh, individuals of different culture different upbringing you know but we share one common office space and according to miss mayor we must show consideration and respect to everyone not only to our superior but also to our colleagues even to the smallest rank in the corporate organization the janitors the security guards we must show good manners and etiquette to them so this as a you know a, a reminder to us from an etiquette expert that you know good etiquette is showing consideration and respect to others so in other words it is our good manners moving forward to the next slide so these are some history of most common etiquette rules and uh, according to uh, to the word etiquette it came from a French word meaning to say keep off the grass no? so etiquette originated from France and in the French language it is the meaning of etiquette is keep off the grass and over time it was morphed into what is today so meaning to say uh, let's uh, let's keep off our bad manners let us keep off from being disrespe disrespectful let us keep off from not being considerate to others all right number one uh, most common etiquette uh, etiquette in the past is you remove your hat when entering a building the logic here is this during those times no uh, in the industrial revolution uh, men wear hat women wear hat and the environment is very dusty because during those times uh, the roads and streets are not yet concreted or or asphalted meaning to say there are a lot of dust no so that's why when you enter a building you should remove your hat number two is don't wear white after labor day what does what does it mean uh, labor day emphasizes summertime and during summer it is uh, most individuals wear uh, colored dresses and not white because colored dresses absorb heat as uh, colored dresses absorb heat while white dresses reflect heat so in other words you don't wear white during summer you must wear colored dresses because it absorbs heat number three sit with your ankles crossed uh, this uh, etiquette uh, is geared to female gender uh, because during those times no uh, women uh, should be you know uh, in proper posture that they have to cross their ankles when sitting all right number four men should walk on the street side of the sidewalk to protect the women uh, during those times there is no um, mechanical transportation so it's just horses wagons that's why uh, roads are not cemented so uh, men are protecting uh, ladies uh, and they walk on the street side of the sidewalk to, to you know secure these female genders 
not because uh, to prevent them from uh, being hit by you know uh, horses and wagons and even some uh, you know uh, dirt mud okay number five pulling out a lady's chair uh, this etiquette uh, usually male genders uh, pull out uh, the chairs of lady when sit uh, when uh, they are going to dine in or you know uh, sit uh, on the table because uh, ladies before uh, wear some uh, insensitive dresses no so that uh, these sensitive parts are not shown uh, male gender usually uh, pulled out the chairs of the ladies when being seated number six never point your finger or stare at someone uh, this is very true, especially during those times, no? That if you point your, if you point your finger, if you point your finger or stare at someone is inviting the devil according to the uh, old saying. So that's why, uh, that's why during those times, never point a finger, no? Never point a finger or stare at someone uh, even today no even today i think this etiquette is still uh, up to date because we never we never uh, point our finger to someone no because it is unethical all right number seven blessing someone after a sneeze uh, during those times especially in germany no uh, when somebody sneezes, it means to say, uh, it he will he or she will get sick. So that's why when you hear someone sneeze, you always tell them God bless you. What does it mean saying God bless you? God bless you when you hear someone sneeze, meaning to say you are telling that person who sneezes to be protected by our Creator, not to get sick. The next, a man should always pay. Uh, during those times, women don't work. So they don't have any sources of income. That's why uh, during those uh, early days, men should always pay because men is capable of having uh, jobs earning incomes. Use separate fork for your salad. And dessert what does it mean it means to say that there is a serving spoon for salad a serving spoon for dessert uh, precisely the saying before was not to spoil the food that is secondary the primary is the taste of the salad will not go to the dessert so that's why you should use a separate fork and the last always shake someone's hand during an introduction or greeting according to uh, legend and myth this etiquette is to check someone if that person is handling a deadly weapon they want to check security check so the best etiquette is to shake the hand of the person that you met because it also adheres to security check. So these are the historical or common etiquette rules in the past. Again, uh, we are talking here of a French word etiquette, meaning to say keep off the grass. Moving forward to the next slide. We go now to the definition of office etiquette and we define office etiquette as it is basic manners in the world of business my dear students we have gmrc in school before and i really don't know if gmrc subject is still being offered it is called good manners and right conduct so this subject is etiquette because it talks about good manners and right conduct and according to some literatures good manners starts at home 
through our parents. So this good manners and right conduct, it does not start in the in formal education or in school. It starts at home. That is precisely where we build our manners. It starts from home. Alright? And then, number two, definition of etiquette is this. It is a set of rules, policies, guidelines that governs or influence us socially. And these rules are socially accepted behavior. So we are talking of people, we are talking of human beings, we are talking of behavior of each individual. That's why it is termed socially. And, uh, and these rules are accepted behavior in the social environment. This definition, we now proceed to why is office etiquette very important. Number one is we want to show respect and consideration to others. That is the importance of etiquette, especially in workplace. Not only in the workplace, but also in colleges, in universities, in schools. We must show respect to our professor, to our instructor. We must show respect to our classmates. We must show respect and consideration to administration and staff in the academy. This is good manners. Again, we also want, it is important because we want to create a good first impression of our manners. Right? So, uh, English only policy that I adopt in my classroom management is one of my manner and respect to my profession and vocation as a faculty professor. Uh, English only policy is one of my rules that govern me uh, about accepted behavior in the academy. Why? Because after graduating and getting your diploma, you are going to apply for a job. And the Human Resource Department is going to ask you and interview the applicant in the English language. And if the question or interview is in the form of English language, the applicant should ethically answer the Human Resource Generalist or Specialist in the English language. Because answering it in Tagalog or Filipino, is unethical. Moving forward, there are some basic rules in office etiquette, and we will discuss this one by one. Number one, if you have a door, close it if you take personal calls. Meaning to say, uh, in an office environment, when the space is, you know, an open space and uh, you have, uh, you know, a private call and if there is a door, close the door. It is ethical to close the door so that your personal call cannot be heard by your office mate. Doc, for example, there is no door. That's fine. Make a short call telling the caller that you have to call back again. That's it. That is one office etiquette. The next, keep your computer and phone muted or on silent so that every time you get an email or a, a, a call or a message, it does not alert everyone on the floor. This, this, this is true, no? Especially uh, not only in uh, offices, but also when you go to places of worship. Uh, sometimes the, the, the priest or the pastor will tell you to mute your phones while you are having 
a praise and worship or uh, you are attending a holy mass because that is an etiquette so that uh, everybody will not be disturbed or will not get annoyed same is true when you are inside classroom with whether that is a virtual classroom or a physical classroom in school you have to unmute your cell phones same is true when you are in the uh, office because of the T data privacy act no data privacy act uh, that tells us uh, to lock our PC desktop, our laptop, when we are going away from your office table. Of, uh, if you are going to leave your uh, PC desktop or laptop, uh, one of the security protocol is to lock your equipment. Because you abide and comply with the Data Privacy Act. Number three, do not use a conference room to take long personal calls or treat it, treat it as your personal office because squatting is precisely and absolutely done in the gym and not in the workplace. So what does it mean? It means to say that the conference room is a venue where thoughts and ideas are shared together, are deliberated together to form uh, evidences uh, and to show uh, data so that the people who are using the conference room can come up with a good measure and can decide for a particular topic or issue that concerns the organization. Conference room cannot be used as your private venue for your personal calls definitely a no no okay remember that students moving forward do not use the restroom to socialize because indeed other person has to do their personal activity inside the restroom and doing uh, and using the restroom as a venue for socialization is a no no whether you need to call or your mom or catch up on the latest office news, you cannot use the restroom because restroom is really designed to do your private activity and not your, you know, your private, uh, you know, activities. Number five, if you are in a meeting, give your undivided atten attention to the person speaking. Of course, right now. If we are doing an online uh, or online schooling or classroom, I want my students to focus on me. I want my students to express and ask questions related to the topic being discussed because that is an etiquette. Not only an office etiquette, but good manners and right conduct. If you are in a meeting, please put your 100% attention to the facilitator. Put your focus in the meeting proper, not somewhere else, because that is unethical. Number six, try to avoid foods that splatter or slurp or have a lingering smell in a shared office environment, because that get you know that smell annoys an individual because that individual shares also the same space where you are using the office no uh, precisely uh, during break periods let's say lunch time there is a pantry there is a cafeteria please as an ethical rule use that pantry or cafeteria as your eating space and do not eat on your desk one reason is to avoid pest no this is an augmentation to pest no because if you are going to eat on your table 
uh, you are going to attract pest and small crawling insects. And that is a no-no. And it will also protect your PC equipment from crawling small insects. So use the pantry area and cafeteria to take meals, lunch, or short snacks. Next is remember that others need to use communal kitchen. Let's take, for example, uh, a microwave oven. Do not, you know, as good manners, if there are spillage of, you know, some, uh, some oil or some uh, soup, uh, please wipe it with the tissue paper. And you follow the rules of using micro microwave. Do not use aluminum foils or, you know, stainless steel fork and spoons. Use only microwavable materials. So, this is an etiquette. No? Uh, not only in microwaves, but also in the use of refrigerators, especially in business process outsourcing, where, uh, you know, call center agents uh, have pantry, they have a refrigerator to store their food, and during uh, meal breaks, they are going to a microwave and reheat their food. Always put cover and name tag so that uh, it will not be stolen. And people will identify that this belongs to a certain person. And that is office etiquette when we are in a communal kitchen. Number nine. Uh, this is very true. No? If you're sick and contagious, you shouldn't be at work. Otherwise, you put someone in risk or in danger of catching the virus. Especially nowadays, uh, we have COVID-19 pandemic. No, If you are unwell, you have cough, you have running nose, you have cold, and you don't feel well, stay at home. It is uh, a good manner and an etiquette to stay at home. And last is think before you hit a reply. This refers to your email or using social media. Social media is, yes, of course, uh, everybody can see it, but do not post. Like, for example, you hate your co-employee, your co-worker. Do not post your hatred through a message in social media. Or if you want to uh, use an email, uh, think twice, no? Review your tenses and grammar. Uh, review your uh, CC copy, no? Uh, to everyone listed in the email. So think before you hit reply all. Maybe uh, the email is intended not to show everybody around the world, but it is only you, the supervisor, and the manager or the vice president, or it is interdepartment. So, you copy and reply to uh, those people, and if it's not uh, your interdepartment, remove them. Okay, that is good manners and right conduct. Okay, the next, don't block the elevator door. No, uh, yes, uh, you should uh, follow some good manners because uh, in case of emergency. Uh, ele elevator doors should not be blocked. Fire exits should not be blocked because this is a medium uh, for our safety protocols. And if you are using an elevator, you try to make a queue or a line, no? But do not block, of course, the the doors, no? Number twelve. Whoever swipe their card to access the door, wait until the first person has walked. So we are referring to uh, an offices that has door access and using your access card to allow entry. So fall in line. Do not go ahead of the person in front of you. And that is not uh, an appropriate etiquette in the office. 
think before, uh, okay, we're done with this. All right, number 14, what matters more is showing respect to people who are more senior to your office, no? Uh, seniority, no? Pay respect. If that uh, person is ahead of you in terms of age, that person is ahead of you in terms of longevity in the office, and that person is senior than you because that is your manager, please, please, show respect to that individual, okay? Next, it is important to let people know you're running late, especially in the meeting. Hey, uh, Steve or John, uh, I will be late in two minutes. Uh, I'm just parking my car. Hey, Myra, uh, I will be late for uh, five minutes. Uh, I'm caught up in uh, traffic along the street. Number 16, if you choose to put on fragrance or perfume, remember, this is an office space. You know, some some individuals are having, you know, asthma and allergy because of disorder or impurities in the air. So, might as well, you know, as a good uh, etiquette and good manner, try not to overwhelm yourself with perfume. Maybe just the sensitive points in your uh, body, but not the clothes. Okay? Next, don't complain about your colleagues or work on Facebook or Twitter if your account is private. It could get back to them. That is uh, using social medias because, you know, nowadays uh, there's no more privacy in social media. So just a good manner and office etiquette. Don't involve your or, or may complain uh, using social media. It is imp okay. Oversharing details of your personal life is unprofessional. No? Uh, let there be a borderline. Let there be a limitation. Not to uh, tell your colleague about you. No? Starting from your childhood up, your, up to your adolescence. Telling your personal life. No? That, that is also a good manner and right conduct. Okay? So, uh, this is about famous quotes, no? about good manners and etiquette. According to Bill Kelly, good manners are just a way of showing other people that we respect them. According to Emily Post, good manners reflect something from inside. An innate sense of consideration for others and respect for self. Very nice, no? And according to Theodore Roosevelt, politeness is a sign of dignity, not subservience. Very beautiful. No? So, if you want to have office etiquette, if you want to have etiquette in our mindset, in our entire system, we must think that the foundation of etiquette, not only office, but everywhere, no, is showing respect and consideration to others. If we respect others, we should respect ourselves. If we are considerate to others, we should be considerate to ourselves. And therefore, etiquette is not studied in offices. It's not studied in schools. The foundation of etiquette is at home. And the floor is now open to question and answers, students. I want to see a raise of funds. I want to see uh, a reaction, a feedback coming from the group. If the lesson and the course is very clear, maybe you could share and feedback what topic interests you most, especially uh, in the basic rules of etiquette. Give me uh, the most, uh, share to me the most interesting and striking etiquette that you learned, no? and let us discuss this interactively. Alright, can I see a raise of hand? Come on. 
Counting once, counting twice. Count there you go. Good job. All right. So for our uh, assessment, I have a formative assessment. So my instruction is we are going to use Microsoft Flipgrid. You are going to make a three-minute video. No, you are going to enumerate and explain in your video the most favorite office etiquette that you learn. Now, students, if you are unfamiliar with the use of Microsoft Flipgrid, please watch tutorial videos in YouTube. Okay? And then, after creating your three-minute video in Flipgrid, you should submit and share the URL link of your Flipgrid video to this platform. Alright, so very exciting and uh, productive uh, engagement for today. Uh, I wish you uh, uh, the safety and health to each and everyone. Always follow the protocol, safety protocol, and thank you for attending this course. Goodbye and see you next time. Masalam.